everybody and welcome back to the Art Life YouTube channel. My name's Mrs. B and I'm so glad that you've chosen to do some fun art with me today. Now, grab your oil pastels and grab your paper because today we're going to create something that looks just like this. Today we're going to learn all about warm colours and cool colours, the difference between them and the type of effect they have on an artwork. Now it's really important to understand these two colour groups because we're going to colour in our art half warm and half cool. We're also going to learn what a landscape is and have a go at creating something that looks like this. So come with me today and I hope you really enjoy this arty activity. Today's Art Life Art Lesson, all you need is a piece of A3 paper. Today I'm using some awesome craft card from Zart Art, however you can just use some white paper or whatever is available to you. You could also use coloured paper if you have it. The only other thing you need is some oil pastels. I like to use Portfolio because they're really high in oil and great quality, but if you, whatever pastels you have will be fantastic for this task. So get yourself some equipment and we'll get started. Before we start our task today, it's really important that we understand the difference between warm and cool colors. Today, we're gonna have a talk about these color groups and what they're all about. So did you know colors have temperature? A color can either be warm or it can be cool. And our artwork today is centered around these colored groups. So it's really important that we understand them first. So if you have a look at a simple color wheel, just like this one, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, it helps us to understand the relationships of color. So when looking at warm colors, really, it's simple enough just to split our color wheel in half. These ones here are my warm colors. These ones here are my cool colors. And it's easy to remember because really, they just remind us of things that make us feel warm. Things like fire, the sun, and sunburn. That makes colors warm. Now these bottom ones here, they're my cool colors. And they remind us of things like the ocean, jumping into a cold pool of water, or a really dark, cool forest. These colours are cool in temperature. And if we use them together, can make our artwork feel cool. Or if we use warm to go together, our artwork can feel warm. Now when creating an artwork with both of these colour groups, Warm colours tend to jump to the front of an artwork, while cool colours recede into the background. That's because these colours are probably the brightest and they stand out the most. Yellow being the happiest and brightest colour of them all, and red as well being super bright and vibrant, mixed together makes orange. So these three together are really fantastic bright combination. Now, these aren't the only three colors in a warm color scheme. There's lots of others too. For example, well, pink is actually just the same color as red. It's just red and white together. So where do you think pink goes? In warm or cool? Yeah, it's warm just because it's light red. So he'll go there too. What about brown? Now, I believe that brown also goes in the warm zone because it sort of makes me think of a wide, vast desert or um, some hot sand. So I would put brown in with the warm as well. Now, what about white? What does white remind you of? 
snow. I think that makes it cool as well. So really all of our colors here can be separated into these two groups. So that's the first thing we need to do is coordinate and work out where you think each of the colors you have available to you might go either warm or cool. Cool. Now we can move on to our awesome warm and cool artwork. Now while you're here, make sure that you subscribe below and ring that bell because I have some really fun art activities coming up in the future, as well as a super exciting announcement. So if you ring the bell, you'll get notified so that you can watch that special episode. Now, today we're going to do a drawing of a landscape. Now a landscape is, I guess, an image of any form of land. And there are so many to choose from. For example, you could do mountains with rivers. You could do some snowy mountains, some really tall peaks with snow on them. You could do a seascape. So there's no land there, but it's still considered a landscape. You could do a big ocean, or you could do a forest. You could do a desert. You could do an urban landscape, which would consist of lots of buildings, high rise, like a city. So once you've thought of which landscape you'd like to choose, you need to split your paper in half. Now you might choose to do that by folding, just lightly, or you might choose to draw a line. Now today we're doing our drawing with a black pastel. That's gonna make all of the lines that we draw really stand out from the page. Now a black pastel is a lot thicker than say a texture or a gray lead pencil. So we're not looking at a lot of detail in our drawings today. If you're wanting to draw people or something with lots of details on it, it might get a little bit messed up um, and, and messy because it's hard to draw detail with, um, with pastel. So it's important to kind of keep each of your images nice and large. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a line in the middle here with my pastel. And the idea of our landscape today is to show half of our artwork with warm colors and half of our artwork with cool colors. This is a fantastic task for assessment for those teachers out there that are wanting to really assess students' understanding of color relationships and the difference between warm and cool because the idea is to really separate the sections of the artwork. So you'll be able to see quite clearly who understands warm colors and who hasn't quite got it yet. So have a think about what landscape you'd like to do and start drawing. Um, I'm gonna do some hills. Now I'm drawing straight away with my pastel today, but if you aren't too confident doing that straight up because we can't rub it out, feel free to draw with a grey lead first and then just go over it. Now, the important part of this task is to create sections. A section is sort of an area or a block. We're gonna use one color for each section we create. I'll show you what I mean. When I'm drawing my sun, which I'm going to do here, at the moment, this sun only creates two sections. I've got one section here for the sun and then one section here for the rest of the sky. But I wanna make as many sections as possible so I can use as many colors as possible. So in drawing the sun rays, I could do the sun rays like this, or I could actually bring them all the way down to my horizon. Look at that, I've created another section. Now you can do this in many, many ways. It does not need to look just like mine. You might choose to do wobbly lines for the sun rays. You might choose to do more like a sunset coming around, almost looking like a rainbow. Whatever you do, I'd love to see some creativity and uniqueness when drawing, but also really concentrating on creating some different sections. So I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 sections in my top half here for my warm colors, which means I'm probably gonna be able to use most of these, which is awesome. 
So now I need to think of some sections I might choose to do in my lower section for the cool colours. All right, I'm going to do a bit of a river here. Now at the moment I only have one, two sections, so I need to try to create some more. Notice when I'm drawing, I'm drawing quite big. If I drew a really small little bush there, colouring in um, would be really tricky. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is pretty good. So this is step one done. Well done, guys. You don't need your black pastel anymore. Now, your job is to really focus when colouring in. I do this task with grade two students, so maybe seven or eight year olds. And I find that the students that don't concentrate are the ones that sort of just start colouring colours anywhere. For example, um, they think a hill should be green, so they colour it in green. But actually, this should be the warm colour section, this line and above. And so that would be an incorrect um, colour choice and not showing um, their understanding of warm and cool colours. So it's really important that it's clear that the part of this task and to make it look as effective as possible and show the difference between warm and cool colours is to really stick to half-half, um, you can swap, you don't have to do cool down here, you could do warm down here and cool up there. Um, it's completely up to you. All right, now it's just time to colour in really. I love using the craft card because it actually makes the colours really stand out. Now please don't rush this task. You'll be able to tell it's rushed because it'll look like this and it probably won't be as effective. But if you press quite hard with your pastel, you can see that the color is super vibrant and almost looks like paint because it's so bright. And if you get right to the edges and get all those, well, I call them white gaps normally, but we're using brown paper. So the brown gaps today, try to really focus on getting all those. And it will take some time. But if you show really good workmanship and effort, I think you'll be much prouder of the work that you complete. If you choose to, which you may or may not, you could also use more than one color in each of your sections. You can see I'm sort of blending my pink and my orange a little bit by coloring over the top. You may choose to do that if you like. So that's one section done, a few more to go. So you may notice that each section I'm colouring coloring a brand new warm colour and that's just going to give this artwork a real sense of brightness. It makes the black pastel really stand out. And it makes it just a little bit abstract and fun. Now, I cannot recommend these pastels enough. Um, portfolio is what they're called. Um, and they're just the best quality ever. You can see they're so silky smooth. It's almost like coloring with lipstick. They're so oily. Um, it's really quite quite lovely. Now I'm about to use this purple in my warm section. Now before you say I'm crazy because purple is actually a cold color, it is. This is a red purple. So it's actually, you can see, quite ready and it goes in the warm section because of its red base. Um, sorry to confuse you, I don't, I don't want to confuse you, but I guess each colour has, um, you know, a different base to it. This purple is very different to this purple, as you can see. This one I would consider cool, 
but because this one has so much red in it, um, I'm happy to put this in the warm section. That is my warm section done, looking bright and beautiful as ever. So I'm halfway, I need to now complete my cool section. You can really see the difference in the workmanship here. It comes down to the pressure that you use, pressing nice and hard, but then also making sure that all these gaps are covered. If I were to colour like that for the whole um, task, it, it would be quicker. Uh, definitely wouldn't take as much time, but my product wouldn't be um, as bright and bold. Now, this is quite a big section that I'm doing, so I'm choosing to um, blend these two colours together. And then I might even do a third colour down here, sort of another green for this greeny grass area. And while you're watching, it'd be great to hear which type of colour group is your favourite. Do you love warm colours the best or do you love cool colours the best? Feel free to write your answer in the comments and tell me why. You know, do you, do you love cool colours because you find them relaxing? Or do you love warm colours because you find them really happy? Feel free to write your answer down there. Here's a list of my socials, everybody. Um, obviously, you, you know my YouTube if you're here. Um, make sure that you subscribe for future videos. Uh, on Instagram, I have a personal art page as well as an art teaching page with lots of fun art activities. So this one here at artlife.melb is, um, is the one to follow if you want some really fun art activities to do at home. On Facebook, I also offer um, heaps of extra sort of tips and um, ideas if you want to follow me there. have it a warm and cool color oil pastel landscape now that you can see it's all finished the warm and the cool sections are very very obvious um, and if you're a teacher it's very clear um, evidence of understanding with your students so I really hope you've enjoyed this relaxing coloring task and that you're proud of the outcome that you've been able to create please make sure that you take some photos and tag me at artlife.melb on Instagram because that is a way that I'm able to see what you're doing at home so a little trick of the trade, if you are completely finished and you would like to just make sure that the pastels don't smudge um, or get messy, it's a good idea to just use some hairspray, spray it over the top, just a light layer, okay, and that will fix everything in place. So it's as simple as that. I really hope that you were proud of the outcome that you were able to create and really learnt a little bit about the colour groups, warm colours and cool colours and how to use them. It would be really great if you take a photo and tag me at artlife.melb on Instagram because it's a really fantastic way that I get to see what you're doing at home with these lessons. I have another oil pastel lesson coming up that I'm going to upload really soon so make sure you keep an eye out for that if you really enjoyed this one. <laughs>